Hi, okay, so today I'm joined by Kirsten Atkinson. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, um, I'm Kirsten Atkinson with Hand and Paw. Um, we actually, our organization is right down the street from the library, a couple blocks, not far. Um, and when we're usually in the office, we walk by the library when we go to the park um, because we we're able to bring to the office, which is really fun. Um, I guess I consider myself an, a Birmingham native at this point. I've lived in Birmingham um, for over 40 years, and I grew up in Bluff Park. My family moved from Pennsylvania. I still have lots of family up there, so we go visit when we can. Um, but when we moved to Bluff Park, there was really nothing there. It was dirt roads. Um, you could ride horses. There was a, a horse stable there, which is really interesting. Now I think it's all subdivisions. Um, but it was a, a pretty child, which is really good. Um, we read books, we ran through the neighborhood, we lived right on the bluffs. Um, so we had lots of wildlife uh, running around and um, it, it was a great, great childhood. No computers or cell phones or anything else um, involved. <laughs> so I know that the area changed greatly from when I lived there as a child, but I still have really, really wonderful memories. So I'm so excited to have Hand and Paw uh, as part of this project. I'm a huge dog lover, and anybody who's watching this who knows me knows that, that I'm just like <laughs> elated. Um, and I was hoping that you could tell me a little bit more about the services that you provide. Sure, so Hand and Paw is um, a nonprofit in Birmingham that provides animal assisted therapy that is, it involves um, a highly trained dog that loves to go in the community, loves to be petted, just lights up when they see people and their owner. And they volunteer together as a therapy team and they go to all sorts of organizations across Birmingham and Tuscaloosa. Um, we go to hospitals, clinic situations, um, schools, and nursing homes. And I think one of the, the biggest program partners that people really recognize are the hospital visits. We go to Children's Hospital and our teams visit with um, critical children. This provides a distraction from pain, um, from isolation that you feel being in a hospital situation for long periods of time. It brings them some stress relief, um, not only to the patient, but to the family and also the family family member, siblings of the child that's in the hospital. Um, recently at UAB went to the COVID unit. This is all virtually right now because we cannot visit in person, but we were able to provide stress relief for the staff, for the healthcare providers that are really on the front end right now of COVID. Um, and just to see them light up uh, when our therapy teams came on Zoom was incredible. Um, just to give them a little bit of a, a joy and light uh, moment during such a hard time. So our therapy teams really um, bring just wonderful joy to the community. Um, we go to nursing homes and a lot of times um, the nursing home residents, you know, they can't have an animal there. So being able to touch a dog and um, talk to them and talk to the therapy team really brightens their day. Of course, we're not visiting now, but again, we're developing virtual visits. So um, we beneficial qualities um, and schools. We have literacy program um, called Sit, Stay, Read. And that's one of my favorite programs is the Sit, Stay, Read program because um, a, a child in kindergarten through third grade can read the dog for a child that may be struggling reading out loud to their peers in front of their peers in a classroom situation. Um, so they do this once a week and enhances their comprehension, um, their verbal fluency, and gets them more comfortable speaking. And that dog just provides that support for them to do so. And after a milestone, they receive a new book that's been potographed 
by their <laughs> therapy team. So That's it's so an extra incentive to, to read and to love reading. That is amazing. That's so cute. That just, all of those just warm my heart um, to know all the services that you're providing. And I want to thank you and your organization for doing that, um, especially finding creative ways to reach people during COVID because I know that it's hard. Um, so normally, like, uh, I guess before COVID, um, how, uh, how do people become involved in being volunteers with Hand and Paw? So generally what you do is come in with your dog for a screening process. Um, you fill out the application online and we uh, set up a time for you to come in. We wanna make sure that you and your dog have the personality to visit in all different situations. So you really have to love people. You have to love being able to go into new situations and meeting people you've never met before. And your dog really has to be one of those special dogs that just doesn't meet a stranger, that just wags their tail, wants to be petted, that engages with people, that wants to walk up to someone. Um, so we look for all of those magical qualities. And on top of that, you do have to have um, completed an obedience class, a group ob obedience class with your dog, because it shows that um, how you work together and how you communicate well with each other. Um, because we want to make sure that you are supporting your dog, your dog is listening to you, um, but it's very gentle commands. Um, you know, we don't want anything harsh. No. Um, we just want a really good team that we know naturally will go into all sorts of situations and be able to bring that comfort and joy to some of the more vulnerable people in our community. Um, we do classes. So one once you're pretty much accepted into the program, so, um, two hours, once a week for about five weeks, and then we do an evaluation. And the evaluation simulates an actual visit. So we see how you interact. Um, it's almost like role playing. And we also make sure that your dog will listen to those obedience commands. Um, they'll be leave something, they'll say leave it. Um, to go around an object that we wouldn't want them to put in their mouths, um, and that you're both really communicating as a team. So there's some basics um, as well. And we have those all on our website. We have a wonderful screening video um, that you can look at, that anyone could look at, um, to see the processes. That's something we did last year to try and demystify it, because we really want to set you up for success. And we want you to be a wonderful team that's able to go into our community. So we start with basics and then you move a little bit more towards um, the role playing and what it's like to visit with different individuals in different situations. Um, but ultimately, it's really just about you and, and your dog and wanting to spread that, that goodness of an animal um, with people in our community that, that really are more isolated than some. Yeah, I think uh, my, my dog's name is Thor, and he's a ham. He's a very obedient ham, but he, he just loves people. And so I, I would like to uh, get involved and in touch past this, uh, because I think it would be good for him to, he just loves, he never meets a stranger. And I think it sounds like your program would be perfect for him. Um, so um, how are you operating during COVID um, aside from doing the videos for uh, the Zoom videos for those in hospitals right now? Has anything else changed? Sure. So when we first started um, our visits, you know, stopped our visits, we started doing recordings and our teams would record uh, um, just we we just sent that by email to our program partners. Um, and now we're starting more virtual visits. So virtual visits um, consist in real time. And our uh, program partners are then able to meet with our teams and continue some of that programming. So in addition to the hospital visits, uh, we're doing the literacy program, which is staying we were able to continue that program there and we hope to continue that program in Birmingham with our schools once we start back um, and some of our other 
So the kids will actually be able to read to a team virtually and then get the book at the end of the program with, oh, the, nice. with the team's potograph. Yeah. <laughs> I just love that, the potograph. <laughs> That's so cute. It's really sweet. <laughs> so um, talking about just the changes that we're making during COVID and kind of operating differently, I feel like everybody kind of is right now. Um, what are the things that bring you joy that you make time for, um, even when life is stressful, uh, things that maybe you carried into this period or things that you have picked up like new hobbies? Sure. So reading, of course, has always been um, a huge love of mine. So reading more books than usual. I'm trying to turn off the computer more than I, <laughs> I did before because I'm on it. When you're at home, you tend to, you know, answer emails later into the night. And I'm making some, some really good decisions around that lately um, to keep more work at our tons of time with our dogs um, and gardening. I've always loved gardening um, and, and we love to grow our own vegetables. Every year we plant sunflowers in our front yard. And this oh, year we beautiful. did double the amount of sunflowers because um, our neighborhood, you know, people stop and say how much they love them. And we thought, well, let's plant more this year and hopefully bring a little more joy. Um, so it's just the little things, you know, growing our own tomatoes, um, pickling cucumbers. We, we have a, a nice little garden over here and we're just spending more time. Um, it's healthy, you know, getting outside, walking the dogs, of course, um, and just spending time, you know, with my husband. Um, we are really staying home. We are doing the best we can for our community to keep people safe. Uh, we live in Crestwood, so we have a wonderful, wonderful community over here that really adapted to, um, to COVID and I'm so appreciative of their efforts to stay safe. Um, thank you books has been wonderful with their pickup service. Um, Crestwood Pharmacy, Shepherd's Pet Supply. Like I just, I am so thankful for having these wonderful local businesses. So we're really trying to make an effort to support them. Um, and also stay home and stay um, safe. Before we move any further, um, I, I forgot to ask you, what, what kind of dogs do you have and what are their names? So I have three rescue dogs. Um, Fozzie Bear is a poodle and Bindi is a Cavalier mix. Um, and they're all rescues. So the, the two um, boys, Rigsby and Fozzie, were both sur surrendered to the Humane Society. Um, and Bindi was through a, a family friend that needed to rehome her. And she's just, she's incredible, but she would be the, the one that would have the most potential. Um, she's just a <laughs> sweetheart. She's right here at my, at my feet. So I'll have to get her and let her stay. <laughs> yeah, um, I was hoping, I was like, I hope that she brings her dogs on camera. Uh, definitely. <laughs> uh, I definitely do that as my coworkers will, uh, will testify to that. I always bring my dog Thor onto our, uh, our little discussions. I'll be like, oh, hey guys, it's Thor again. He has to say hi. Yeah. And everybody loves him, but they're like, hi, Thor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's great. Of course, all of us at Hand and Paw, all, you know, staff meetings, it's all of us and our dog. So, <laughs> so we cute. do staff meeting and, and, and it's still just a lot of fun. We all miss each other. And I know Bindi especially misses going to the office, so seeing everyone and getting treats from everyone. <laughs> from all the offices. So. Okay, so moving into uh, a, a fun library question. Um, what are some of your favorite books or favorite authors? Or um, you said you read a lot. Uh, what, what are you currently reading? So currently I'm reading Ross Gay's Book of Delights, which I think is really timely. Um, he is a poet, but he did a series of essays over the course of a year one for each day. And it just reminds us to look at the, the little things and find joy in life. And I think that's such a huge lesson right now. Um, so I'm really trying to pay attention to the good things. Um, and his essays are just 
snippets of his life and um, like one of them, he takes a tomato um, onto a, a tomato plant onto a plane and just all of the the reactions to the tomato plant <laughs> from all of the people are just wonderful. So it's, it's just um, reminding us to sort of slow down and look at the little things that bring us joy. Um, so that's been really timely for me um, to just really pay more attention to the good that's happening. Um, for movies, I was thinking about this recently and I can't say that I have a movie that has changed my life, but there's one that I just watch over and over and over again, and it's uh, Persuasion. Um, and it's with Syrian Hines. So I think there are versions and it's the, the one in the middle. <laughs> I can't remember what year. Um, I haven't seen the recent one, which I think was 2007. Maybe it was like 1995. Um, but it's just a lovely story of love lost and found. Um, and I can just watch that movie. I don't know how many times I've seen it. I just watch it over and over. It's very and um, that adaptation is, it's not like a costume drama, it's just real people. Um, and it just, it, it's a wonderful production. So I, I just love that movie. You can watch it, I don't know how, a thousand times. <laughs> at this point. I'd probably still have it on DVD if I had a DVD player. <laughs> you know? I love those movies that you just can watch over and over again and not be tired of. And my sister and I have like a few of those where we know like almost every line. <laughs> well, I want to thank you for um, joining me for this series. And uh, it's just such a pleasure to like meet you. It's just my favorite part of the series. is just meeting all the different people um, through these interviews um, in, in a different way, but like in such a meaningful way. Um, and I just love what you're doing at Hand and Paw, and I'm really excited about possibly volunteering in the future. Um, so I guess to close out, um, how can the community be involved at this time? Are you taking volunteers at this time, or like, is there in other ways that people can uh, support your organization, I guess, sure. since things are so different now? Right. So we had one group of uh, therapy teams that made th made it through training at the first of the year. And of course, we had to shut everything down. So we're not looking at new therapy teams now. Um, however, we do have fundraisers. We have one coming up August uh, 14th, and that is Tail Wagon Takeout. And it is is a drive through takeout. You get an appetizer, you get dog biscuits, you get human biscuits. Um, oh, a little wow. cocktail and a bottle of wine and it's right in the neighborhood so you just drive by we put everything in your car and you drive off um, so it's safe physical distance um, so that's coming up and then also books if you have if people have used gently used books that we can give to organizations um, that will help them read to a therapy team or new books that we then award um, the student after reading. Um, we love books. Kindergarten through third grade is really what we're looking at. Um, we were going to start our library this year when we really kicked off our, our sit, stay, read. Um, and we still want to. We still, we still want to do that. It's just a little bit slower than we had anticipated. Um, so absolutely, go to our Facebook page. We have really sweet uh, therapy teams and videos that you can watch there. You can see our fundraisers um, and, you know, just books, good books for kids. Um, you know, we are, we need to um, support literacy in Alabama, especially now when kids left school early Absolutely. Um, and may, may not be going back. So in, anything we can do, with those kids that may be struggling even more uh, would make a huge difference. Absolutely. And um, I know we have a lot of patrons who are always looking to donate books too. So I think this will be great for people watching. Um, we have a lot of people who look at the face of the Avondale Facebook page as well as our main page. And um, here at the library, we'll try to help you out as, as best as we can because we're always giving away free books too. 
That's right. So, um, cool. before I let you go, um, you said that you had Bindi with you. Yes. <laughs> Hello. Oh my gosh! <laughs> You're so cute. Look at you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Are you teddy bear. Um, oh my gosh. <laughs> You're so She's cute. Super sweet. She's also <laughs> very treat oriented um, and motivated. Oh, ready? Can give you a high five? Can give you a high five? Oh, that was. <laughs> She's so like, scary. I want the treat. <laughs> She's a little sleepy. I just woke her up, so. But she's a sweetheart. We'd love to come visit you at the library when we we're back. Yes. And so, is she? Does she work with the program too? Do you? Do your dogs work in the program? Like, do they no. volunteer? They are not therapy teams, um, but I bring them to work. So oh, yes. especially, especially her. They're still doing to, work. <laughs> yeah, we walk to the library. We walk to Avondale Park. Um, so we're in the neighborhood for sure. If you ever see us, please stop us and say hello. Oh, so cute. So nice <laughs> to meet you, Bindi. Well, thank you so much for joining me. And I hope the two of you have a great afternoon. Thank you. It was so nice to meet you. <laughs> you Take care.